Greetings, I'm Mark with Unlimited Story, a channel dedicated to writing, world building, marketing, and most importantly, getting things done. If that's interesting to you, consider subscribing. We're checking out our website, unlimited-story.com. In this episode, I am going to review episode number one of Disney's Loki. So if that's why you're here, sit tight, because uh, that's what I'll be covering. And welcome back. So here are my initial thoughts on episode number one of Loki. It was an exposition machine, exactly what I thought. A little bit low on action, but again, it is Loki, so it's not going to be an action-heavy show in comparison to, like, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. What I will say is there's going to be a lot of character progression, specifically with Loki, and already we're seeing a little bit of it, but um, specifically when he goes through this transformation of seeing, you know, what his life was supposed to be, um, there isn't quite... He's not going to go through that same arc. Okay, so he is currently the darkest, meanest version of Loki that is available in the MCU. And him watching his life is not the same as him experiencing his life. So even though he's seen what kind of is going to happen to him, he's still pretty evil. And he's going to be betraying people you know, left and right. What was my favorite part? Paperweights. Using Infinity Stones as paperweights, that is that's hilarious. I mean, just the idea that the most powerful things in the universe that everyone's fighting over that's super coveted, worth people dying in, in like masses to get, um, are paperweights in the TVA. It's it's great. It's it turns everything on its head and it was presented in just the most comical way. So I, I loved it. It was it was great. What was my least favorite part? Basically the plot of this entire series is what I don't like, which is going to give me a real problem because I really want to watch this series. So my biggest issue is that I thought this was just going to be about time travel, and now I find out it actually has everything to do with the multiverse. So I'm really bent out of shape because I think this whole multiverse thing is not a good idea. It's going to be confusing to most viewers. It's confusing to me, and the more I look into it, the more holes I find in it. So least favorite? Multiverse. I mean, I already don't like time travel, but now they added the time travel and the multiverse together, it's it's not looking like something I'll truly be enjoying. Is there anything unclear or confusing? Basically everything to do with the multiverse. Specifically, what constitutes a Nexus event? A Nexus event is basically determined by these three space lizards, and just because it goes against their will, it just... Hey, that's an issue. As pointed out by Loki, in his like trial, he's like, hey, we got this huge problem. The Avengers did it. I'll even fix it for you. No, they don't even care. The Avengers were supposed to. So basically to me, the three space lizards are Disney Marvel. And if they don't want it to happen, oh, it's against the sacred timeline. So I just have this huge problem because they're not applying rules, right? They're, there's just, hey, whatever we want. If this is okay, then this is okay, and this is okay. There's just these broad strokes that don't make any sense. There's just, it's not limiting at all, and it just feel like it's, I don't want to say lazy writing. It's forced writing is what it is. The the writers, who are very skilled at, at making these, these shows, um, are forced to create something out of nothing. You know, they're, they're trying to do too much. They're trying to make okay, we're going to combine these shows, we're going to make this work, we're going to make this stuff, like, except that it doesn't even make sense, it's not even made to work together, and they're just, it's, it's forced, and it's obvious. So, huge problem. What are my thoughts on the main character? Well, I already like Loki as a character, so this is really going to be biased. I will say that I'm really interested in his character progression. That's going to be a huge, huge point of this series, how Loki's character changes, how he manipulates other people around him. So I think it's fascinating. A show specifically about a bard is yeah, its awesome. So I, I don't got anything else to say about that. Love it. What are my thoughts on the other characters? Well, Agent Mobius is the only one worth talking about. He's going to be our tried and true, like, mentor type person for Loki so he can basically progress and, and so on. The other characters, you know, for example, the Hunters, the Judge, all those, I just assume that they're just blind and doing exactly what the TVA tells them to do, and eventually we'll try to betray Loki, or Loki will betray them, they'll try to betray each other back, so I just assume those kinds of things. Um, but Agent Mobius currently is the only one worth even discussing. Is there anything else I'd like to see from this episode? Not really. 
I wasn't really overly impressed by the episode, to be perfectly honest. It gave me the foundation I needed. I would love a little bit more explanation and clear rules to the system that they're using, but I don't see that happening because I don't think that their rules actually exist, and it's all based on the, you know, whatever the three space lizards want to do, so I'm pretty much certain I got exactly what I was supposed to get, and that's it. What do I expect to happen next? I expect Ancient Mobius and Loki to just go out and do some field stuff. I imagine Loki to do a pretty bad job at it because he doesn't know what he's doing. And then eventually, probably by the very, very end, Loki will run into his dark version that is the ultimate big bad guy. But nothing's really going to happen there. They'll either be forced to be separated or it'll just end on them facing, facing off, like seeing each other. How much did I enjoy this episode? About a seven. Is average. I mean, I love Loki, so I had high expectations that were, you know, met in some way, shape, or form. But, you know, the Debbie Downer is definitely the multiverse, so it brought it down a couple notches right out of the gate. How excited am I for the next episode? Seven. I mean, I figure I know what's going to happen overall, and nothing too too exciting. I don't, I don't see anything truly major happening until further down the road. I, I feel like it's going to be kind of a slower build. Uh, than what I'm used to so but maybe I'll be surprised I mean hey we'll find out soon enough is there anything else I want to add yeah agent Mobius referred to Loki as a pussycat agent Mobius's job is to address the most dangerous variants like that's that's his job of another version of Loki is the most dangerous one like he is in charge of handling that so he's trying to fight fire with fire it I'm just really amused that he's like nope no you're nothing but the ultimate problem I'm having right now is just another you. So it's just, I don't know. I just found it to be really interesting. And that's it for my review of episode number one of Loki. If you like this video, please consider subscribing or at least checking out another video that YouTube recommends. Peace.